Hello and welcome to this little tutorial on how to use R Markdown and the OSF to produce reproducible research. To make things simple, I will be using RStudio Cloud instead of a local version, but of course everything like this can be run locally. First, I sign into RStudio Cloud using my Google account. And I set up a new project. This will register a new server with a clean RStudio installation. While this is deploying, I will also create a repository at the OSF. For this, I go to osf.io and sign up after registering and create a new project. HCII 2020 demo project. And since I live in Germany and we have strong data protection regulations, I want to let the data be stored in Germany. A demo create. Now we have a uh, repository at the Open Science Foundation. In the meantime, our studio has also finished setting up and I will set a name up here. And the first thing I need to do is need, I need to install two libraries. I need to install the Statistics for Social Science uh, RMD Templates library. For this, I go to uh, github.com slash statistics for social science slash RMD underscore templates and copy this in the second portion of the installation instruction. And I just paste this in here and press enter. And this will take a little while. Um, the next thing I will need to install is the Open Science Foundation repository, but I will show how to use the Open Science repository first. So this is a project repository. The project repository is generally private. You can have a list of contributors that work together with you. And um, you can cite the whole project uh, using the citation bar by copying, for example, this part here or even looking for the lecture notes in computer science reference, this would be the, the link to this uh, project. The project has a unique URL, which is up here, which is also going to be the public URL once you make the project public. So this is your unique identifier for a project. You can add a wiki, some information about the project. Our project, we will do three studies in this project. Uh, and I have full markdown capabilities on here. I can add links, uh, code, images, and all the other interesting required stuff. And this is in general helpful if I go back to the project because this is the, the description that everybody else will see when they uh, get to this project. We should also pick a license. Uh, in this case, I will set it to CC0 or CC by attribution. Save. So if you want to use the data from this project, you have to attribute it to ourselves, or to, to me in this case. And of course, as we mentioned, we want to have three studies in here. So I will add a component, user study one. It should have the same contributors. It should inherit the same license. And uh, this is a study on cars. You will see why this is the case later. And this is a sub project. It's a project inside of a project. The study itself is a project. And I can now go to this study and now I have a new URL, which is the study home. And here I can add information about the project as well. User study one, we use the empty cars data to demonstrate our markdown. Save. And we go back to the user study. In this user study, we now have, we could cite the study again, uh, or we can add more components. And the thing I would add here first, for example, uh, you could, by opening this, you could add your analysis code, you could add communication with other researchers, data, hypotheses for pre-registration, you can add instrumentation designs, which methods and measures you're going to use. You could have an algorithmic procedure or software developed or anything else. But in our case, we want to share data and this would be um, car data. And it should have the same contributors, create and go to new component. So this is now our data, the, the data that we actually want to share. So if you only want to share the data, this would be the URL. If you want to share the full study, you would share the previous link. And on the left-hand side is where we have our stored our data. And I will quickly drag a CSV file on the storage here. And now we have uploaded our first data and I can have a look at CSV files in table format. 
And this works for uh, other formats as well. This is data on different cars. It has mileage per gallon, cylinders, engine displacement, and some other information. Probably everyone in statistics knows this data set because it's a publicly available data set. And going back to the RStudio Cloud, we see it is still installing. I will fast forward here. Okay, now we see that RMD templates is fully installed. And the first thing we will do before going to the OSF is we will create a new markdown file, which is file, new file, R markdown. And we will go from template and we will go to Springer Lecture of Computer Science and we want to name this paper 2021. So this is next year's paper. And here we see this is the document. Uh, we can set up the outline, we see there uh, first section, references, and stuff like that. And we, if we press the knit button, this will generate the document. The first time you run knit, it will take a while because it will probably have to install um, some tech packages. No, it doesn't, so this works out of the box. Um, and we see a first lecture notes in computer science format document formatted well. So there is not a big benefit here, but what we can now do is we can start writing stuff in our sections. This uses Markdown, and in Markdown we have, the document actually serves as a tutorial for Markdown, but we could, uh, here we have some demo text, and the data for the paper is in the subfolder here, paper 2021, and the document that you would want to submit, there is a template file, and Currently, it only creates a PDF file. If we want to submit the tech file, we must set this keep tech flag to true. And if I now knit this again, it will create the file again, which we've already seen. And it will also keep the tech file for submission to Springer. This is the PDF that we've created, and these are the two files for authors. You can quickly remove Anon here to create a non-anonymized version. And now this is a non-anonymized document. The information for the authors is in these two files. This is the anonymized version and this is the regular version. And the benefit of using RStudio is that we can now um, try to get the data from the Open Science um, repository. But for this, we need to install a package first, install packages, and it is OSF for Open Science R, Open Science Foundation for R. And we will need to include this here in this top. Um, it tells us that the OSFR package is not installed because it's installing at the same time. And now we can try to retrieve our data from the OSF. OSF commands start with OSF and we want to retrieve a node. And the node ID is the five characters from your main project. When you're on your main project website, copy these five characters, put them here in brackets, and we will then see there's an authentication error. We need to authenticate ourselves um, using, um, our, using a so-called personal access token. And this is done by calling OSF off and giving it the personal access token. To generate a personal access token, we go to the Open Science Foundation, click on our project on our own uh, name. We click on settings, personal access tokens. This will, well, this has expired. I can delete this. Um, I can create a new login token and this should only have read access. Uh, demo HCI 2020, create the token. And I need to copy this and put this in quotation marks here. This registers me and now I can retrieve the node and I will now have access to the project. And let me make this a little smaller and this a little smaller. And I can now um, retrieve the subnodes. Uh, there is this subnode called user study, uh, always F list nodes. So now this gives me the, uh, the next one. And 
I will list the files. Oh, I have to pick the one here. So I will set this pattern to user study. This is the car data that we want. This is also, and in the car data there's nothing, and so this is where we will list the files. If we have multiple, um, multiple nodes here, we need to have a pattern that matches the exact thing. So now we get our file, and we can now download this file, OSF, download, I think this already works. And now we have the empty cars data in our folder here. One thing I would add is set conflicts to override. And now if your contributor updates the survey data, you will always have the most recent version. By the way, this should not be in a shared code file. So for this, I would always add a new R script. Uh, which says this is the authentication file. Do not share publicly. And I would take up this, enter it here. I go in here and call it auth.r. This is just a small r file, which I will quickly source here. So now I always have the most current version of the empty cars data set. So far, nothing has happened. It basically creates a, uh, a document. Okay, there's an output here which we don't want to have. So the next thing we want to do is in here, we want to set up this to, as to uh, show nothing but run the code. We see the document looks as it should look. But now we have a data set which is available at the OSF for anyone who wants to reproduce the data. And what we can now do is I add a block of R code here. By using three backticks and R, and I will call this figure. And what I want to do is I want to read the data that I just uh, downloaded the empty cars data set and I want to plot the data and I want to plot it in a way that on the x-axis I want to put engine displacement on the y-axis I want to put mileage per gallon and as a color code I want to use the cylinders and it should be a point plot this read CSV okay it's not available because I haven't loaded all the libraries yet And now when I'm here in the text, this should work and it will create um, our plot. And this plot will also be in the paper, but this doesn't look right. These cylinders, these should actually be a factor and not, so they get assigned individual columns. Yes, this works. And yeah, let's prettify this a little bit. Uh, let's give it a title. Um, displacement by mileage. The x-axis is engine displacement, the y-axis is miles per gallon, and the color is cylinders. So now this should look yeah, like a nice, relatively nice to use plot. We can also add a theme to this, uh, maybe the base cow plot theme, which is, yeah, this kind of looks like something I would want to have in a paper. And the benefit of now knitting the document is that this plot will appear in the document at the location where I've added this. So here we have some demo text and there we have the plot as written in, um, in the markdown document. So what we can now do is, because of, yeah, figures need captions, we can add a figure caption and we can caption this as demo plot from data pulled from the OSF. And maybe this plot was a little bit too high, so we can say figure height is maybe only 
let's put it to two inches and check what this will look like. Yeah, so it's a little bit smaller. It, we can also change the width if we want to, uh, but it works. And the other thing is we can now reference this text as well. Here we have some demo text. Uh, we also use a figure. Let's see, figure um, at ref. And I think we now have to put fig figure. Figure. If you're unsure, in the demo document, there is always things how to look this up, how something works. And this should now work. I can now knit the document. And we now have a link reference to our first figure. We have the ability to use uh, footnotes. We can use different sizes of headings. We can use referencing to documents in BibTeX, which is actually very nice by having a BibTeX file like this R packages bib is automatically created for you to cite all the packages that you use in R, which is good behavior. And in bi bibliography bib is where we have references from um, that we use in document. And by we can cite, for example, this paper by going um, in brackets at and then the citation key. And using multiple references, we can separate them by using a colon. And we can have access to all the environments that are available as well. If you have external figures to use, you can put them in this folder by going to upload. And there is an example in here how to create an image as well. Um, here, for example, this should include um, a figure from, from a different directory, which is not included because it's not available here. So what we've seen is now we have created a document from Markdown, from our Markdown, which allows us to use inline analyses on, on data that we have made available in the Open Science repository, which of course we can cite in our document to refer to it. We have data that we can share without sharing all of the project. And we have a document that uh, renders easily and quickly to the desired format, while also creating a text file to share with uh, Springer.